Chris, that was some sample videos from Khan Academy. And I like your style of delivery because I don't think you're going to lose anyone. It's kind of folksy. You're not rushing through it. But it looks like the videos are very simple to produce. It looks like they cost next to nothing to create. Um, is there anything preventing other people from also jumping into this field and creating their own similar videos? Uh, no, and, and I hope they do. It, it literally, to produce these videos, I think some of the people at home could start doing it tonight. Uh, you just need a little pen tablet. You can get it at the local electronics store for under $100. I use Screen Capture. You can get uh, shareware versions, and I'm just using an art program. I started doing Microsoft Paint. I've now used other slightly more fancy uh, shareware pieces of programming. Uh, but it's, it's, it's very simple, very easy. I started doing it just because I, I was remotely tutoring my cousins in New Orleans, and when I was doing that, we just had a shared whiteboard. And we didn't see each other, and it seemed to work. So I figured, hey, why not do it the same thing? And I, then I wouldn't have to get a camera crew and all of that on. Uh, uh, for yeah. Now, how are the videos used? Is this something that a person just watches at home alone, or can this be brought into a classroom situation? When, when I started, I envisioned it being some type of a supplemental uh, material for, for students so when they're home. If they need to remediate, fill in gaps in their knowledge, they can just dive in and get a 10-minute nugget that fills in a, a basic building block, and they can pause and repeat it as much as they want. But I've gotten a lot of feedback. It's starting to be used in the classroom, and really it's, it's an organic process, and it, it makes a lot of sense. If you, if you think about it right now, I've, I've gotten an email from a, a teacher in London that said, we've flipped the model. We are now, uh, instead of doing lecture in the classroom and homework at home, I now assign Khan Academy videos at home where the students can watch it at their own pace, at their own time, pause and repeat, fill in their, 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 their gaps in their knowledge. And then when you come to the classroom, then you do your homework. And then you, can, you, you get the benefit of the teacher being around. The teacher can observe what, what students are doing. And the students can help each other. So you're actually taking advantage of the, 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 the social aspects of a classroom to actually teach each other. So uh, it, it, it can be used either. It could be used for a homeschooler. I've gotten uh, letters from uh, parents who, one, they use it for their, 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 their kids, but they also use it to stay ahead of their kids so that they can, they, they can teach them you know, one step ahead. So it's really, uh, I'm, I'm learning of new applications for it every day. So like, how do the teachers know that the kids mastered the material? Would they still have the same traditional test, or could you have a thing where a child finishes one video, they somehow demonstrate that they've absorbed what it taught, and then they go on to the next video, and so people kind of work at their own pace? Yeah, and, 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 and when I started the Khan Academy, it's most known for the videos, but there's an entire software piece that I started really building for my cousins, and now several tens of thousands of people are using the, the software. And the idea is you start everyone at 1 plus 1. There's these little modules people can log in right now and, and start working on it. Starts at 1 plus 1 e equals 2, and the paradigm isn't get 80% right and you're a C student, or 90% right you're a B, or 95% you're an A student. The paradigm is get 10 in a row. Because even if you're an A student and you got 95% right, what was that 5%? In math, you know, I think we can all appreciate in mathematics, if you have even a 5% gap, when you build on top of that, that you, know, you don't know what something is to the zeroth power. And then when you see it in calculus, you're like, gee, I don't know, I was an A student, but I still didn't know that one special case. So the paradigm is get 10 in a row, and as you get 10 in a row, you get, and, and while you're doing the module, it's, it's tracking everything, uh, every interaction with, with the actual software. So if you think about it, you're getting instruction from the video, you're getting practice and feedback directly from the software in real time, and then everything is being tracked. So it's actual real-time assessment that's actionable. D the teachers can actually get data on what to do about what students, and everyone's working at their own pace. Because the tradition is that everybody goes in lockstep, which is bad in two respects. One respect, uh, the slow kids get left behind. The other respect is that the fast kids are held back. And, and, and the real irony is sometimes there's a flipping of, uh, you know, I think we've had, we've had the experience where you're like, oh, this is easy, and you're kind of bored, and all of a sudden, wait, I, wait, I, I missed yeah. that, and you're now, you've now fallen behind. And so, what, and I've seen it in the data of, of, of students using the software, is that sometimes a student will, when they're working at their own pace, a student that you might say is slow initially because they're spending more time on one concept, once they get that out of the way, they race forward. So it's actually very hard to predict who are the slow or the fast students. And so it's, and, and you know, just going back to the traditional model, it's, on some level, you know, we've gotten so used to it because it's a thousand years old, but we don't question this idea of passively getting lectures, then you go home and you do things in a vacuum and you keep doing that process for several days, and then you get a snapshot assessment. And when you get the assessment, it tells you, you knew 80% of that concept. And in, in the normal world, when you're learning something, if I, if I only know to ride a bike 80% of the way, I'm going to keep sitting on that bike until I can always, you know, before I, before I try out a unicycle. Yeah, and a lot but, of people seem to have a real math phobia. I've known people who just don't believe they can understand anything in math, and it might be because they missed one, 
Like it's a chain of exactly. knowledge, and if exactly. one link in the chain is broken, then you lose the rest of the chain. But here, uh, you don't advance to the next link until you're sure that you've mastered this link. Right. I, I, you know, there's a couple of. Re I'm I'm convinced that a lot of the frustration that goes on in say an algebra class isn't uh, because the student is slow or because the teacher is bad. It's just that the student has a weakness in borrowing numbers or negative numbers. And there's no way in that algebra class to address that negative number. The student might not even know that they have that basic weakness in negative numbers and they just keep talking past each other. So uh, I, I think you're exactly right. That's the problem is that no matter how good you do the traditional model, how good the actors are in it, if you have this basic core weakness, there's no way to address it in the traditional model.